So the reason that I chose creativity specifically is that it actually helps with a lot of things. It helps when it comes to problem solving. It helps you think outside of the box. When we think on a day-to-day -day basis, we kind of think with these specific patterns and certain connections are made. For example, if you were, because our brains are trying to be as efficient as possible all the time, they basically want to be on autopilot as much as possible because they don't have, it doesn't have to overwork and it's an efficient organ. Um, however, when we do art or we do creativity or even when we kind of expand out of our comfort zone and try something new, we're basically forcing new connections to be made and it's kind of increasing our brain's plasticity. So plasticity is basically the, the meaning that your brain can change. We can create new connections between different things, we can reassociate things with other things, and I know that all sounds really confusing, but this is also basically the basis of neurolinguistic programming, which is something that I use in a lot of my coaching. So a lot of this has been proven to work, and that's because the brain is always changing, and you can always retrain the brain to do certain things. If you think about even people who might have strokes or something really serious, um, they're often able to relearn a lot of the tasks that they forgot, and so that is kind of because of the brain's plasticity. And so the reason that creativity is so important is that it helps your brain create more connections, it helps you kind of start to think outside of the box, and it helps you see things in new ways. So when you're hitting a slump or you're feeling like you're in a rut, it's a really good time in your life to kind of connect with um, a creative practice or something that involves art that isn't too serious, because I think the problem is when we you know, do something like this and make a YouTube channel, then you can get caught up in views and you can get caught up in, you know, money if you're starting to make money from it. Or, you know, there's so many different things that come into play that make it more serious and it's not just a creative practice anymore um, if you're trying to, to make something out of it. And so that's why, I mean, you know, you can literally just take a piece of paper and draw on it or scribble on it and then throw it away. Like so many of us when we're kids, you either are used to the idea of having like your artwork being put on the fridge or being framed. There's kind of like this preciousness sort of idea around it and that's something that I want to change because yes art is precious and yes it's beautiful and yes you can have amazing works of art that need to be treated very carefully but you can also make art and throw it away just because of the benefit that it gave you and I think when it comes to people who have perfectionist tend tendencies or want everything to be right or you know don't fully try because they know that they can't be perfect so then they don't even want to give themselves that chance all of these things can kind of cause us to be paralyzed and cause us to have like decision paralysis basically where we don't want to make any moves and we don't want to make any decisions because it could mean that we are all of a sudden not going to be successful at something because we're trying something new that we don't know how to do yet. And so I think it's really important to change a lot of people's mindset around art and around creativity to say you can scribble through a whole coloring book and literally throw it away like it doesn't matter and like Yes, ideally recycle it, don't cause like too much more waste in the planet, obviously, but I mean that your art doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be put in a frame and it doesn't have to be gifted to someone. You can just make it because it's useful to you in that moment. Sometimes I just need like a fresh page and I need to like anger scribble all over it just to get my anxiety out and my anger out, but that's a healthy way of getting your anger out. Like you'll never get to a point in life where nothing makes you angry and you should be angry at things. There's lots of injustices in the world, but at the same time if you can find a way to get through it and to kind of work through those feelings that you're having while doing doing something productive or while, you know, doing something that at least isn't going to harm you, then that is obviously the, the key. That's the goal. That's what emotional management is all about. Well, here's a few of the things that I did, and I hope that this can give you some ideas of things that you can do to kind of be an everyday artist. You don't even have to pull out a coloring book, but you can find different things to do around your house, around your desk at work, even in your car. Just liven things up, and that can also help on its own when you're in a rut if it comes to, you know, just kind of freshening up your space or changing your environment around, those are always good things to do. Just finding ways that you can be creative in your everyday, day-to-day -day life is something that is extremely important. First thing that I wanted to talk about is actually um, plants. So plants are obviously a great way to liven up any kind of space and they introduce a little bit of fresh air into the room. I mentioned in my um, five free ways to re reduce anxiety video, which is still one of my favorite videos that I've made, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, but I talked about grounding and earthing, and these are really important um, 
things that you can do, but um, where I live, especially in Colorado, it's already snowing and it gets super cold, so it's a little bit harder to go barefoot outside and enjoy like dirt or sand or anything. Actually, repotting plants and replanting things or planting new seeds um, is a great way to kind of get your hands a little bit dirty and you're feeling like rich nutrients, and there's just something very calming and kind of relaxing about it. So the way that grounding normally works is it works through you being barefoot. Obviously, I didn't use my feet to pack the dirt in these planters, I used my hands, but it still was kind of relaxing. It was almost like playing with clay or like slime or something. Um, so that's a really great practical option. My next tip is just painting things that you already have, spray painting furniture, um, just making plain things that you have a little bit more fun. I love this tip because it's ex especially uh, cheap. You can get most spray paint for like three dollars for an entire can and that can normally goes a long way or you could just buy cans of paint and paint little things. You don't have to go crazy and paint your whole wall. I'm renting so I'm not allowed to change the color of the walls unfortunately. Um, but this is a really great way to customize your home and to personalize things but what I love especially about this is that it kind of reminds you that you have control over your environment and that's something that we all all I need to remember, especially when we're in a rut or when we're feeling down. Um, it just kind of allows you to look at, you know, the thing that you made or the thing that you painted um, that you use every single day and say, oh, I did that, I changed that, or I made it look that way. And sometimes little things like that and seeing those little reminders every day of something that you did, of something that you took the time out of your day to do to make yourself feel better um, is great to, to have in your home and to kind of remember um, how good you felt when you did that. So another thing that I've done recently is actually been, uh, I've been decluttering a lot and I actually for the first time have kind of separated my wardrobe into like a summer and spring wardrobe and then like fall and winter. Um, and so that's been really, really nice and it's been, I'm not quite at like a full capsule wardrobe yet um, and I don't want to get rid of that many clothes if I don't have to because I do pretty much wear everything that I have right now. Um, but it's, it's really great and honestly in a way I would kind of like to call an activity like this proactive self-care and the reason why is that we all have like annoying spots in our house that are really annoying and cluttered like junk drawers or the the bottom of your dresser or your sock drawer there's always something that we have that we could make look a little better and i think that when you know you're you're always spending an extra 10 minutes in every morning you know searching through your makeup or searching through your bathroom cabinet for your products or searching through the pile that you have on your floor for something to wear if you just spend a little bit more time and get a little bit intentional you might not find decluttering and organizing as fun as i do um but knowing that you know what you're what you need for the week or what you need even for the next couple of days is kind of laid out in front of you and is really organized and that you're not going to have like a mini stress attack every single time you open that one drawer is really going to help and it's those little tiny annoyances that can kind of build up over time so if you're proactive about it and you know that you're going to have to reach into your closet or you're going to have to reach for your makeup every day then just do yourself a favor and spend one day decluttering it and organizing it and then you know you don't really have to revisit it for maybe another month or a couple of months until you're ready to get rid of some more stuff or if you need to reorganize it just makes my day-to-day -day life more simple and i think that simplicity is truly one of the best things that you can do for self-care because it's being proactive about not stressing yourself out and kind of knowing okay being late stresses me out this stresses me out so how can i not do that and not ever have to get to that point point? and when you do those things that are proactive you're genuinely getting to the root cause of why you get so anxious about things and then you can start to really better things and make better daily choices um, to kind of help you through that so the last thing that I wanted to say is probably like the most intense of the projects and that's um, just actually going to a hardware store and like building something or putting some shelves together or doing something like that. As you can see, um, we're sawing some wood down for the bathroom cabinet shelves and it just feels really good. Again, it does give me that kind of sense of control over my environment, but it also shows me how capable I am. And there is something called self-efficacy. I wrote a blog post about it and I can link that in the uh, description down below. It's basically the idea that um, you kind of need to start things in small chunks. So if you were um, maybe going from never working out, never eating healthy to a full-fledged like you want to be a bodybuilder, the first steps would look kind of different for everyone, but this, some things that would make it easier, easier for you to get to that bodybuilding goal is going to the gym every day or going to the gym, you know, five times a week. 
and then starting to eat healthy and then kind of going from there but it starts with one day getting up deciding you're going to go to the gym getting that membership and then putting out your shoes and making that first step and then after that it's just a series of decisions that gets you to that final goal point that's what it's like when it comes to these small projects you're like solving your own problem and being that kind of agent having that sense of agency within yourself to say something's wrong here but no worries i'm just gonna go out i'm gonna fix it and it's gonna be good and that's all it is say you know what this is where i am you have to acknowledge where you start and then from there you start to take small steps and you start to do little things that make the bigger things seem easier and easier and easier and you just move on from there i mean i think that you you need to have that idea of just kind of being able to sit with yourself and saying this is where I want to be or this is not where I want to be and you have to look at yourself in the mirror and really acknowledge that but then all it is is just taking steps to better it you don't have to feel the shame you don't have to let yourself beat yourself up for it what you can do is just practice taking a problem and solving it without the stress without the anxiety without beating yourself up without being so hard on yourself without saying I should have known better I should have done better I shouldn't have made this mistake You don't need any of that. You just need to focus on what the direct problem is. And figure out why. Figure out. <laughs> figure out why and how you can solve it, and then just do that. And the the whole idea of that is that you can get from point A to point B and you can have a million panic attacks along the way and you can get really anxious and you can hate yourself and you can feel so so ashamed of yourself or you can do your best to manage those things and prevent those things from happening and then still just say I'm just gonna get from point A to point B and I know that that could sound like a crock of to someone that maybe has anxiety or that has depression but trust me I've been able to do this and I still have those conditions and as you know I still have issues that come up related to those things but it is possible to get from point A to point B without having stress and without hanging, having anxiety in at least a couple of areas if you can do that with a couple of small projects who's to say that you can't do that with something bigger I know that this video is a little bit different but I really hope that you enjoyed I hope that you were able to see the importance of creativity um, because again it has made such a big impact in my life and I honestly cannot imagine my life without having some sort of creative practice that I can fall back on at any time. Um, so I would highly suggest it to you. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. I'm so glad that my little family here is growing and if you have any other ideas or any feedback, definitely love to hear from you in the comments below. Happy healing!